Welcome to Replit's 100 Days of Code. I'm David Morgan, and I'm going to be taking you through 100 days of code, 10 minutes at a time, to teach you everything you could possibly want to know to start your Python adventure. So let's get started. In the next 10 minutes, you'll be learning all about print statements and how to get your computer to output messages to the screen. This is by far the most important lesson you'll ever learn in programming because it's the first thing you need to be able to do. So let's get started. You'll see this wonderful window in front of you that looks like this. The left hand side is the introduction and the text base explanation, but the video, which you're probably watching now, should be floating in this beautiful tutorial panel on the bottom right. During the video, I'll pop up this screen and ask you to pause it. You should be pausing this video when you wanna do some work. And if you need a bit more room to see what's happening, you can, of course, move this video window around, resize it, and put it where you need. If you need to close it at any point, click the kebab menu and click close, and you'll notice in the top left-hand side of the tutorial pane, we've got a button that says show tutorial video, which will pop it back up when you need it. We've also got a table of contents if you want to jump around in the written instructions. Before we move on, let's just take a look at this bar of icons on the left-hand side. That top book icon is to bring you back to the tutorial pane if you ever close it. The one directly underneath that looks a bit like a file is the files pane, which we'll be using to add files to later on. You can move between these as you want. Once you've completed your code, all you need to do is take your mouse up to this top corner and click mark lesson as complete. You'll then be prompted to share your progress on social media, and you can do that simply by copying the tweet and clicking sharing on Twitter, and then you can go back to the hub for your next day's lesson. This is the Replit workspace, and there are some key features that we need to look at. First, we've got our files pane. This is where all your files are gonna go. This is your main coding window. This is where you're gonna do most of your typing, and it's where your code's gonna go. Over here, we have the console. The console is the output from the program. So anything we tell our program to show to our users will appear here. Now this bad boy is the run button. It is the thing that makes your code run. So we'll click that when we want to turn the code into a working program. Let's stop faffing about and let's get coding. In the grand tradition of all courses like this, we're gonna start with saying hello to our world. What we need to do is type in print brackets, within those brackets in speech marks, I'm gonna type in hello replit. And let's click that run button and see what happens. Immediately, we've got something working. This is amazing. So what's all this then? Well, we've learned our first statement, the print statement. And the way this works is that print will take whatever is within its brackets and place it on the console. You might be wondering why the thing in brackets has quotes around it. Well, it has quotes because quotes are our way of telling the computer that we've got a bunch of text that you need to print out. And in our case, a bunch of text would be called a string. So it's a very, very simple setup. Print, brackets, quotes, and whatever you wanna print, go inside those quotes. Some of you may have noticed by my accent that I'm British. I know, shocking. But that does mean that I am calling these things brackets. Some of you may call them parentheses, some of you may call them rounded brackets. We call them brackets. And because I speak the King's English, that's what I'll be doing as well. Sorry. As an aside, you can use double quotes or single quotes. In my examples, I'll be using double quotes just for clarity at this early stage. What happens if we need more text? Well, all we need to do is put more of these commands in. And if we click run, we'll see that repeat after itself. Please note that every time we put a print statement in, the output goes on a different line. This is a really great way of spreading all that stuff out in your console and having some control about the way it looks. You can even add emoji by either copying and pasting it or bringing it from your system's emoji picker, and that will pop out on the screen as well. One little cheat that might be useful for you is if you want to write a load of text, press enter a few times and separate all that out, you won't be able to do it with just one set of quotes, but there's a magic set of quotes that lets you do that. When we print, if we add three sets of quotes to start, you'll notice the computer has automatically put in another three sets of quotes at the end for me. 
Well, anything I write between those two sets of three quotes will be printed exactly. And when I run this, you'll see that the three quote form of printing just copies the text exactly as it appears and puts it on the screen. Now this is really, really handy if you're putting longer bits of text or paragraphs, or you really want to spend your time writing out something that looks exactly the way you want it to pop out the other side. Now common problems, because code isn't always ease and magic. Sometimes things just go wrong. When it goes wrong though, Replit does try to help you. In this example here, you'll see that we've got a red underline in the code. If you hover over that, Replit tries to give you a suggestion for what that could be. And it says undefined name print. If we were to run the code, we'll see a similar error message going on here, a name error, print is not defined. Now you might be thinking, why? You've already told us that print is a thing. This is the very thing we are learning about. What's wrong with you? Well, yes, but not print with a capital P. And that's the issue in this case. We have to be very careful with the way we capitalize things when we are coding, because it is that pedantic. Well, what else could go wrong? You'll see once again, Replit is highlighting the error for us and it says invalid syntax. Let's run it. Why don't you take a pause and have a think about what's wrong in this code. Oh, no, it's trying to help us here. It says missing parenthesis in the call to print. And it's even given us an example of how the code should look. And yes, you're right, we are missing our brackets. So it's a really common thing, again, to forget to put brackets in. And it's an easy fix if you do. What about this? You're at your lowest ebb and you've demanded that the computer just works. Please, just work. Well, again, Replit's trying to provide us with some suggestions, in this case, invalid syntax. Let's run it and see what it's actually saying. It's the same error, invalid syntax, but can you spot what's wrong? Have a look. Yes, we haven't put our text in quotes. Without quotes, we are basically telling the computer to print something that doesn't exist. We need the quotes around the text to tell the computer that it is text that we want it to print. Click run and it actually works. They're some of the top errors you might see or you might encounter in your first day of code. Now, if you want a bit more of a challenge, why not try this? I've created some code that doesn't work. Can you fix it for me? Give it a go. Here is your challenge for day one. We really want you to get into the spirit of 100 days of code. So we're gonna ask you to write a statement of intent, to really prove to the world that you want to do this. We're gonna ask you to output your first name and today's date on the console. Then you're going to add this piece of text to your output and ideally only using one print statement for the entire chunk. On the next line, we want you to write, I am feeling to tell us how you're feeling about it. But instead of putting your feelings into words, let's put your feelings into emoji. We're gonna add one more line to your output. You're gonna do this, and after the at symbol, you're gonna put in your Replit username, which is on the screen, in blue, up here already. Next, run your code. Screenshot it. Share it on social media with the hashtag Replit 100 Days of Code, and share your first code output with the world. You might also wanna take this opportunity to publish to our community. Click the publish button and follow the workflow to get your code being seen by thousands of other people. Well, great, you've done it. Congratulations and well done on day one of 100 days of code. We'll see you tomorrow where we advance past just printing something on the screen and look to take something from our users as well. Thank you.